As the day begins, we head over to plan the barbecue and have a good time. Well, we're about to do a cook-off with my boy Javier. Depending on the marinade or the rub, it can take anywhere from four to six hours. We had some Cuban mojo, we had chimichurri, we were just ready to barbecue. So we got here some uh, hickory wood, natural hickory, hickory raw wood, and uh, on top of the charcoal. And this hickory is going to give a really nice smoke to the beef that we're going to be cooking up. So I came in 1980 uh, from the Mariel. Mariel is uh, a port in Cuba, Mario Hemingway, and uh, we call it Marielitos. But back in 1980 where I came, you know, the Marielitos were uh, down like I in Miami, so I was embarrassed to say that. And, uh, you know, I used to hang out with my cousins and my family, and I used to say I was French. My name was Jean-Pierre. My name is Javier. So Jean-Pierre from Javier. And, uh, you know, my cousins that went to college, USC, Quick story, we're hanging out at a party at USC one night, we're sitting around the floor drinking, having a good time. Everybody's introducing themselves, so when it comes to me, I have a heavy accent. I do one now, but back then worse. And I go, yeah, my name is Jean Beer, I'm from France. The girl that's sitting across goes, oh, I'm French, como talez-vous, blah, blah, blah. That's when I turn to my cousin, oye, vamos. <laughs> And, and how has the change today? Oh, it's great, man. I'm proud to be a Marielita. I think I've accomplished a lot, you know, uh, and it's, it's a good thing. I like to let people know that you're winning for Mariel so they can see that, that you know, you can, you can come from, from nothing and you can accomplish something. Whatever that something is for you, but you can accomplish it. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I tell everybody. Finding our identity is something we've all faced as Latino growing up in America. What are you cutting here, a cauliflower? I remember coming over from Nicaragua back in the 80s and at those times they made us go through the small yellow buses and different school systems and I remember sort of being embarrassed or you know, me da pena, uh, you know, the difference in cultures. But you look at today, where society is at, it's actually an advantage to speak both languages. And so I always try uh, to thank my parents for instilling not losing our culture and always speaking Spanish at home. Looking back at that cultural adversity that most Latinos faced in today's society, pretty much laid the foundation of who we've become today. So he's so much fuerte y educado. Oh, that's lo que me ayuda a mí. You know, you look at uh, corporate America, they want to mirror the community. Uh, you look at the Latino growth. Eh, entonces ahora es, es eh, importante que uno hable dos idiomas. So I'm very proud that my parents stuck that with us because it made me who I am today. And and so it's it's good to not forget who you are or or your cultures because look what, what it is now. So gr growing up here as a Hispanic was not easy. Um, you know, I remember being in kindergarten, first, second grade, there was no Hispanics. And uh, you know, my name using Juan Martinez uh, was uh, actually, uh, I didn't like the teachers to use that name. So uh, my name was Johnny Martinez. And uh, whenever the first day of school from kindergarten up to sixth grade, you know, when the teacher said Juan, man, I'd, I'd be like, no, it's Johnny, it's not Juan. Today, uh, using the name Juan Martinez, uh, for me, is powerful. It's used all over the place. Proud to be Latino. Uh, and the, the name Johnny that I grew up all my life using, that name is, is very rarely used anymore, only within the family. So growing up uh, here in Vegas wasn't easy. Uh, growing up uh, around gangs and 
and, uh, you know, being in problems and stuff like that growing up uh, really helped me out. Um. One of the beautiful things about cooking is that you can feel you're in any part of that country uh, in your backyard. In this case, we felt like we were in Argentina. So I've been in the business for loan officer first for about 9, 2004, 2006. You know, I always heard people like, you know, Juan and others. And what a lot of people don't realize, one, that when I got involved with Narrow, it allowed me to all of a sudden create not only a business relationship with producers like yourself and others, but a friendship. That's the thing about Narrow that people don't understand. It, it opens the door for a long time, long life relationship. It's a long term relationship. It's not just about doing business, but it's about creating uh, something outside of that, like a friendship. I mean, look, NARREP has, has created a lot of opportunity for me all over, and I'm very thankful for that, and our business has grown because of it. Uh, but I would say that it's not just the networking and the opportunities that come about. It is a family that we've created, the friends, the friends, you know, my biggest competitors in the Las Vegas market over the last 11, 12 years are my best friends. We spend time here in the backyard uh, cooking pigs and just coming together, which was unheard of five plus years ago. I mean, today we have Armando here, who's come from the Bay Area just to spend the day barbecuing here in the backyard. You're here that we didn't get to meet because, you know, we're, we're here today because of NARA. So NARA brings not only opportunities and networking and all that other good stuff, uh, but the most important thing it brings is, is bringing us, us practitioners, Latino practitioners, bringing us together uh, to, you know, become one big family. And that's probably the, the most that I've gotten out of my real estate career uh, is the whole Mark family. That's, that's important to me. As you guys can see, Juan can cook, man. Medium rare, nothing was dry. We had all cuts of meat. We had chorizo, morcilla, lo cocinamos ahí en, en, en la tierra, right? So there was no cajachina. Javier joined us for the whole day. We, we had a great time. We smoked cigars. We tried out some rums uh, from all over the world, really. And uh, we had a great time, so, you know, what, what, what can you say? All in all, it was a great day to spend some time with some good friends and talk about our challenges. Uh, growing up, right? Uh, hacer Latino en America es muy difícil. Una familia viene para acá, hay que criar su familia, hay que buscar trabajo, hay que educarse, hay que aprender el idioma. So, I think all those things are a great foundation to who we become today, as my friends did and myself, but also a Latino en America. So, it's a story that needs to be told over and over for the newer and younger generations so that they don't forget where their roots are from because the roots is what's going to give them that strong foundation for them to succeed. And Don't say, this is a story that needs to be told more than enough. And, um, you know, these are the moments right here that uh, we look back and, and are proud to be a part of. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned for the next one, okay? That's it.